right, welcome back to Helming Athletics. Today we're gonna to talk about pulling strength in the upper body. And the way that we're gonna tackle that is hitting our strict pull-up. Just a great way to get on the bar uh, and start developing that shoulder strength. Now, this pulling comes more obviously uh, in the swim, right? We gotta work on that when we're swimming, on that freestyle, getting those arms out there, getting that nice long reach. But it's also something that we see on the handlebars on our bike. Not always when I'm in the aero position, but anytime I'm sprinting on the road or mountain biking specifically, I'm pulling on those bars. And that's where we see that rock in the upper bodies. We're starting to leverage our legs and pull a little bit harder, especially going uphill. We got a little bit of pulling in our upper body. And even running, when I swing my arms this way, every time I pull my elbow back, it's exactly a similar pull that's going on. So we wanna be really good at strengthening this. Too many triathletes out there deal with broken down shoulders, they're dealing with some sort of rotator cuff issue. A lot of times this could be corrected with just good pulling mechanics. All right, so if you do not have a strict pull up with your own body weight, don't worry, you're not alone, not that many people do. We still have a way to tackle this thing for you. So one of the things that we can do are pull out some of our bands and we can modify this thing by getting a band wrapped around the bar. We first loop it over, we just pull one end of the band through the other, pull that down, we stick one foot in there, that'll help us out. Make sure that band is right in the middle, split the difference with your hands, and that's gonna make sure that band's nice and even, you're not pulling at some weird angle. I start with a thicker band, I then move to a slightly thinner one, and then eventually no band at all. Another way to modify this thing, if you don't have any bands at all, say you're running around, you're at a jungle gym, I work with a lot of athletes who do little boot camps outside, you can do a partner style pull up. You have one partner jump on the bar, your partner behind is gonna grab right behind the shoulder blades and is gonna give them a little assistance on the way up. I wanna talk about a few points of performance here for ourselves. The first thing we wanna do is talk about hand position on the bar. If you see my hand up here, you'll notice that my middle finger knuckle is a little bit closer than that pinky knuckle. So one of the things that I can do if I get the, my pinky knuckle up and over the bar, I actually shorten the pulling distance I have to go. And then the other more important thing this does is that when I wrap my pinky knuckle up and over, it starts to externally rotate the shoulder back in this hip socket where it really gets a little bit more packed and stable. And then I've got much greater access to my bigger movers back here, specifically my lats. And this is a real nice connection with swimming, this pinky knuckle up over the bar. Most swimmers get in trouble when their thumb leads in the water first and or they cross over so they see a lot of pulling in the front here. They can't get into their lats at all. A little great drill is just to lead with the outside edge of the hand. I start to develop that pulling strength with this pinky knuckle up and over. My second thing I need to work on is gonna be my elbow position with my pull-ups. Just like our knee position, it's really important when we squat because it's a good analog for demonstrating what's happening at the hip level. And we say if we drive our knees out, it really creates a whole lot of stability at the hip and the low back and the pelvis builds a stronger squat. Well, we wanna pay attention to what our elbows are doing too. Specifically, we wanna bring our elbows in because when I bring my elbow in on that pull-up, what it does is, once again, externally rotates the shoulder in the socket and creates a whole lot of pulling stability. So as I pull myself up and down, I want to be here. And that brings us to one of the first faults we see when people jump up on the pull-up bar. Their elbows tend to flare out this way. And when they pull this way, it's just replicating that same motor pattern they're doing in the pool. It's not very strong, it's not very efficient, and it may blow up your shoulder. Final thing that we want to think about with our pull-up position is what our head's doing. And specifically, we want our head to chill out, chin stay nice and neutral. Quick way of finding a nice neutral head, I can take my thumb and uh, middle finger, put it on my collarbone, index finger sticks straight up. This is a nice middle uh, neutral head position with my chin. When we start pulling on things, we're so eager to get up there that we end up throwing our chin up there. It makes us feel like we're higher than we are, but it ends up cranking the neck. And as soon as the head goes up, the elbows go out, the shoulders rotate in. Once again, 
I'm right back where I started, not a very good spot. Keep that chin in nice and neutral. Focus instead on pulling those elbows straight back behind you. Finally, even if you're not a swimmer, you're not a triathlete, uh, these pull-ups are an excellent way to help build our better posture. We spend so much time down at a desk, we're all hunched over, that getting our arms up our head really opens up that thoracic spine, opens up these shoulders, and if I'm a runner or cyclist, it actually helps me open up my ribcage. I can get those bigger, deeper breaths, more oxygen to the muscles, more power down the road. That's always what we're looking for. So there you have it. We got our pull-ups, better shoulder position, better pulling, strength, and better posture. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.